Hey guys, I'm Jerry. I'm Sierra. We're ladies, and we tangent. What's up, everyone? Hello. <laughs> um, welcome back. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say to our channel. Welcome back to our channel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't. I feel like. Here's the thing. Be careful. That's so fucking hot. <laughs> I just burnt. Guys, we got mugs. You remember the dildo out thing? A listener made us mugs. It was my sister, but a listener nonetheless. It works. And yeah. we love them. It says, when in doubt, dildo it out. And all of you who like wanted to... <laughs> Everyone who wanted to like make stuff and send it to us we have a p.o box we now. now have a p.o box so if you want it inbox us yeah we get back to people very quickly or we try we we really do we try we both have children and other like, things yeah <laughs> all the uh, well time. we would rather be responding to you truly <laughs> so um sometimes i do that instead of the other things that i should be doing mm. it's not that hot Oh, you did make me boil it. Yeah, mine burnt the shit. <laughs> I originally was just like, so I just put it in the microwave. And she's like, mm -mm. Mm -mm. We boil. Also, I just have a tea bag in here. So if I, we have UK, did I tell you? We, I can see our demographics. We have people in Denmark. We have people in Sweden. We have people in the United Kingdom. What? We have people in Ireland. If you're any of those people. Hi. Hi. Welcome. Yeah. I know we also have Canadian listeners. We got a message from Brazil. That was so cool. Hey, guys. Yeah. Really, really cool. What a big sleepover we're I having. I know. International sleepover. Wow. Really fun. Um, So, yeah. If you're in the UK and you're judging how I'm drinking tea is just like putting a bag in some water. We like don't know what way. we're doing. I mean, we like it this way. I do like it this way. I just like hot water that tastes like... Leaves. <laughs> yeah. No, that's all tea is, right? Yeah. Right? <laughs> I think it is. I mean, really. Coffee is just hot bean water, so... And tea is just hot potpourri. <laughs> hot potpourri. Is it not? And no, it actually, that's what... TM. <laughs> yeah, please. Somebody explain tea to us. <laughs> TM means trademark. Oh, I thought you said DM me. <laughs> I oh. was like, DM us. Oh, yeah. Might be, might be, might be. It's a far distance on I the know. couch. Okay. Um, so this week, we're talking about emotional intelligence. Mm -hmm. So if you go back a couple episodes, we were talking about counterproductive habits of mind. We were talking about judgments, judgments and how we have all these preconceived notions mm -hmm. and these uh, um, implicit biases and assumptions that we make and yep. how we, is our job to kind of challenge those things. And it got me thinking... I watched another video by that same YouTuber. Yeah. It's Khadija Mbawe. Okay. I think is how I watched um, another video. T Noir is another YouTuber. She shouted Khadija out. Oh. And I was like, okay, I'm going to say her name like she said her name because I, th I searched the comments. I searched all her old videos. <laughs> I couldn't find it. Anyway, so I watched her video and she was talking about how emotional intelligence connects with judgments and the angry black woman and if you want a more um first person experience or uh, i'm not a person of color obviously i'm not someone who has lived the black experience i don't know what that's like yeah. um i can speak from my perspective as a woman who kind of understands um, not being able to have a full range of emotions because of... You get labeled as a certain way. Oh, you're right. so emotional because right. you're a woman. Yeah. Right. Her, but hers is like so important uh, because she talks about how these stereotypes attribute to stifling a, an entire group of people having a full range of emotions. Yeah, absolutely. I can see that. And the reason we wanted to talk about emotional intelligence is because... We are whole people <laughs> with a lot of different emotions. And there are ways that you can kind of process your feelings yeah. and go through. Um, there's a, a method we're going to talk about called the ruler method where you can like check yourself. And sorry if we're just like jumping right into it. But here's the thing. We aren't funny all the time. Yeah. We do like to talk about real things yeah. sometimes. Yeah. And, and the whole point of... This podcast we had mentioned before is being friends. Yep. And sometimes friends have 
real, real discussions. conversations. Yeah. It's absolutely. not all just fun sleepovers. Sometimes it's, I'm struggling with this and yeah. I'll be honest. Or I can see you're struggling with this. Right. I have been struggling with regulating my emotions uh-huh. and conveying my feelings my whole life. I have been labeled as someone who was explosive, someone who had a temper, someone who had a short fuse. And I kind of mentioned that in the judgments video, but I personally feel like when I am trying to express myself, Mm -hmm. sometimes I'm not heard because I'm saying it in a way that's too emotional. Yeah. And so I can't express my emotion because my emotions are... (laughs) Are too, too emotional. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, if you want, like I said, a more in depth, um, specific experience, please go watch her video. Um, she does a lot of video essays. They're all incredible. I, like I've mentioned before, I'm obsessed with her. But she talks a lot about um, a book. Actually, time out. I did have a story to tell you. Oh, okay. Before we like really get into it. Okay. Ollie peed and pooped on the potty for the first time. <gasps> what a transition. <laughs> I know. Okay, that's very Sorry, exciting, I'm though. I was so excited and I was sh- I was shaving that. <laughs> I was shaving it. I was saving it for you. I love um, that. Yeah. That's he, a very exciting moment. I know. He you, because until you become a parent, you don't realize how much someone else peeing and pooping will make your whole freaking month. <laughs> well, here's the thing. I have felt pressure to do it because when he was like about Two, they're like, so is he is he interested in the potty? And I'm like, yeah, but like, no. Yeah. <laughs> Should he be? And because he's my first, I don't know when you're supposed to do things. And I think I heard that it takes boys longer. Because Noah was well after two. Well, I'm not forcing him. Yeah. Because in my mind. I don't think it works that well if you do. <laughs> right. I don't want him to associate negative feelings. With going, to with going to the bathroom. No, truly. I don't want him to hold it. I don't want yeah. him to feel weird about it. I don't want him to be embarrassed. Feel pressured to do it on command. Right. Because some people will be like, sit their kids on and be like, go now. Yeah. It's like, oh, I mm-hmm. can't go if you're staring at me. Yeah. So I waited for him to tell me. And then the other day he was just like, potty. <gasps> and I was like, you want to go sit on the pot? Oh. And he's like, yeah. And so I sat him on there. And he goes, Bush. And then he just peed a little bit and then he looked at us and we freaked out of because course. he had never done it before. Yep. And he started clapping for himself ah! and then he would just like pee a little and then stop and then clap for himself. And he'd kept like peeing in like spurts, but just being like, ah. yeah. Ah! Yeah. Yeah. Are you still entertained? Mm-hmm. And then he pooped the next morning on the potty. Do you He's not gone since, but very exciting is when they learn to like when you clap for them they'll come in when you and Noah used to clap for me good job mommy good job and I'm like yeah <laughs> freaking crushing this right now <laughs> freaking poop so hard <laughs> <laughs> honestly that was tough for me thank you for understanding and giving me a round of applause I needed that oh and deserved it I did well deserved earned <laughs> um and then I wanted to tell you today that we talk about how we lose a lot of hair <laughs> like, you should have seen my shower today it was <laughs> disgusting <laughs> oh yeah so ollie is starting to say a lot more words yeah and shane and i were laying in bed after he got back from work and ollie ran out of the room and then we start hearing hair 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 and i'm like what he sprints into the room with a giant clump <laughs> of hair and throws it at shane <laughs> where did he get it <laughs> i don't know I think he got into the trash. <laughs> he was so, like, here, have yeah. something. Yeah. Um, so that happened today. I would just like to tell the, the story <laughs> of Ollie. <laughs> I'm going to tell a story of your child. Okay. That you were here for. But it's my favorite story of him. And it's when we were down here. <laughs> and he found the toilet paper. <laughs> Why don't I remember this? It just happened. <laughs> It did? Remember, he walked over and he found toilet paper and he was like, ah, whoop. Oh, yes. <laughs> and he, like, mimicked wiping himself. <laughs> he watches. He was so proud. He was like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> 
I was like, what did he do with the toilet paper? No, because he favorite. does that. I loved that. He'll t- <laughs> well, it gets dangerous because sometimes I'll just hand him a wipe. Yeah. I'll clean him up and then I'll hand him a wipe because he, he likes to do it himself. Sure. And I'm like, autonomy, great. Love that for you. Go <laughs> ahead. But sometimes I also use those to wipe boogers off of his face. <laughs> so he will he'll wipe himself like, and you. <laughs> put it on his face. I got a Rudy Giuliani. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, that's very funny. Toddlers are hilarious. I it's know. so gross. <laughs> I know. But he's trying to be clean. I'm like, like, pink eye? <laughs> yeah. I hope not. It'll be fine. Yeah. Anyway, okay. So I, I wanted to tell you that story, but I got so excited to talk about this stuff that I forgot. No, anyway. I understand. I don't think I have anything. All week I was like, I'm going to talk about this. I'm going to talk about this. And then I forgot all of it. So yeah. eh. we, we talk anyway. <laughs> next time. Next time. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway. Back to emotional intelligence. So the book that I'm going to be referencing um, is called Permission to Feel by Dr. Mark Brackett. Also, this is how I take notes. <laughs> Mine saw a lot on my phone. Yeah. And what's funny is when we used to do the podcast, like I wouldn't care if I had notes and I didn't feel the need to make eye contact. But now I feel like I'm giving a performance or yeah. and I don't. Do you remember Stressful. in high school whenever we had to do presentations eye contact was like a part of the grade mm-hmm. and you had to Which, look up five times. Oh no, that was just an assignment I gave. <laughs> what a piece of shit I am. You did? I was just going to like, I was going to say, fuck those teachers. And it was, well, you. yeah, but my students struggle with eye contact. So I was trying to encourage them. To... That was actually why I was going to say, fuck those teachers. I was like, some people t- can't, I know. <laughs> but that's good. You were trying. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I wanted them to build that. And so it was like, at some point, Make eye contact with me like three times while the entire time you're up there. I, I don't have, care. If I do it's... know teachers that have done that, and then they'll sit like this. Yes, and watch you at the back of the classroom, and you have to be like, mm-hmm. "Oh!" And then I get so weird. I don't break eye contact, so I'm just like, "Anyways, Eleanor Roosevelt was." <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. and then it's awkward. Yeah, because I feel like I can't blink and look away. Speaking of emotions, I was reading a book called She Persisted by uh, Chelsea Clinton. Ooh. I forget who the artist was, but it's a children's book. Oh, my God. I was reading it to Ollie. And That's the shirt that I'm going to get. Yeah. I still haven't gone and gotten it because um, it's very snowy outside. Yeah. Um, but I was reading him this book, and I started to cry because I just kept thinking. <laughs> I feel so bad that I, like, cock, I, not cock block. No, not that one. <laughs> cock tease? What's it called? <laughs> What's it called? Just said he could tease. Oh, tease. <laughs> cock tease. Is cock tease not a thing? No, I think it is. I avoid, I try to avoid using the word cock ever. So, just cock tease. tease? <laughs> My cousin and I, Mario Kart Erica, not me. No, it's the other one. Okay. Whenever we were joking, instead of saying, <laughs> I'll wait. <laughs> instead of saying, I'm yanking your chain. We'd say I'm just pulling your dick. Why is that so funny? I'm like, are you serious? And she'd be like, I'm just pulling your dick. <laughs> oh my god, that's <laughs> the best phrase I've ever heard. So if you guys say yank your chain, yeah, say pull your dick. <laughs> just say I'm just pulling your dick. <laughs> Anyway, so I'm reading a children's book, <laughs> and um, I was crying because I just <laughs> because I just kept thinking, here is a young man mm-hmm. who is so invested in the stories of these women Aww. who overcame adversity, and he was clapping for them. And all I kept thinking is, he's never, I hope, never going to look at women and think. That they are weak, that they are less than, just because they're women. Women, because of their. And I just at that moment, I guess, kind of realized how important my role was as a mother. I literally just. How do you transition from what I just said to that? Anyway, <laughs> I'm just pulling your dick. <laughs> I just but no, they haven't. I'm just pulling your dick. I'm sorry. <sighs> Be serious. Be serious. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Sorry. Okay. Anyway, Dr. Mark Brackett. Okay. <laughs> So, he was also on Brene Brown's podcast. I don't know if you guys remember. Or if you're to this 
point if you're starting from the beginning. Um, we talked about Brene Brown. She's fantastic. When we were talking about shame and guilt. So yeah. she's awesome. Um, she has a podcast called Unlocking Us. Mark, Dr. Mark Brackett was on there as well. So he talks about um, this thing. I drew a chart for everybody. It's called a mood meter. You can look it up. Maybe I should probably just find a picture and put it in the video. <laughs> but it's called the mood meter. And essentially, there's four quadrants of it. Okay. And so, let me put my tea down. <laughs> oh my gosh. Hold on. Mug facing out. Let, my, let me pick my hot chalky up. Okay. <laughs> so, the mood meter, this way, is pleasantless. Pleasantless? <laughs> pleasantness. Oh, I, really, I was like, wow. Is that why it's blue? <laughs> no. So, the bottom is pleasantness. Okay. So, it's pleasantness. And energy, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. So if you have, like, a lot of energy, but, like, you're not very pleasant. Oh, me all the time. You're stressed. Yeah. You're enraged. <gasps> you're angry. You're panicked. Oh, my God. There's a lot more words that go in here, but I just took some of the key buzzwords, okay? Here I know. I'm ignoring click clack. Come on. Come up here. So if you are low pleasantness, low energy... You're depressed. This is me. You're disappointed. I you're hopeless. I was, you're fatigued. This is why I have anxiety and depression. I swear yeah. to God, I'm either one of these two it's, all the time. You're just over here. It just depends on how much energy you yes. have. If you have a lot of energy, you're panicked. If you don't have a lot of energy, you're depressed. I tell Jerry sometimes, I'm like, oh, I think I'm getting out of the depression. I feel I'm like a manic On state. the upswing. I'm, yeah, I'm always on the upswing. And then I just am anxious for like a week straight. And then I'm back to being depressed. And I'm like, yeah. so that was not. So you just like live over here. I really do. Yeah. And so then on this side, uh, if you have a lot of energy and you're super pleasant, then you're thrilled, blissful, enthusiastic, focused. This, I think, is where you have like your productivity. Oh, my God. What would that be like? <laughs> I know. Isn't it wild to see it like this? This yeah. is evidence-based. It's an evidence-based evidence, evidence -based map of your emotions. That makes me kind of sad. Because well, I want to be there. Let me explain why I think it's a cool thing, though. Okay. So then down here, if I'm you're... in the wrong neighborhood. <laughs> low, <laughs> move. low energy. And then, but like, you're super pleasant. You're calm, serene, relaxed, grateful. Who is she? Never knew her. <laughs> well, think about it. Grateful sometimes. Think about it, though. If you know about this, yeah. okay, and you, you can switch your mood. Yes. So think, if you're like, I'm feeling panicked, mm -hmm. you can think, okay, that means I'm in this quadrant. That means I'm low on the pleasant scale. Let's shift I, us over. Yeah, I have a lot of energy. So that means it's I'm not lacking in sleep necessarily, yeah. or I'm not lacking in energy necessarily, but maybe I'm lacking in like my clothes are weird and they're not feeling great or, or there's too much sound going on. I'm overstimulated. Maybe my environment is not conducive to whatever I need to do. Maybe my to-do list is too long. So like Ugh. all you need to do is focus on the things that you can change. Yeah. 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 To get you to move to a different place. You're feeling depressed. You don't have a whole lot of energy and you're not real pleasant. Okay. What can you control? If you can't change certain things, maybe you just need to sleep. Oh, that's what I do. Yeah. <laughs> And I do feel serene when I'm asleep. <laughs> so nice. I just think that like this isn't a cure all. This isn't no. like just like I know we kind of shit on essential oils that one time, but like I literally put lavender on my hands and was huffing it today. We didn't we do that together one time? Yeah, during the when I was it imposter, imposter syndrome? Imposter syndrome or anxi anxiety. It was imposter syndrome. Well, we recorded both of them in the same day before you went to Mexico. I think that it was when we had to redo. Yeah, we did syndrome. both of them. Yeah. Was a lot. We did a double header because we, we had like, two beers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But like we understand that together, a healthy diet, sunshine, exercise, there are things that, yeah, definitely help. But if it's a chemical imbalance, it's a chemical imbalance. Yeah. And so obviously medication, this is like if you if it's a chemical imbalance, this is not going to be a cure all. Obviously. No, but <laughs> I think that but it can help. Yes. And a lot of times the more things that you can have mm -hmm. to help walk you through what you're feeling, mm -hmm. to make it feel like you're in control of them and that they're not in control of you, the better. That's because my, what I say. My therapy, my therapy, <laughs> my therapist used to tell me, she's like, yeah, you can get on medicine and I think that you should. Mm -hmm. and I was like, wow, rude. <laughs> but Bethany. 
But then when I did, she was like, I don't, this is not going to cure you. Mm -hmm. You need to keep working because we need to, this is two things that we have to work at. It's kind of like whenever you um, get an accident and they can put your leg in a splint, but then you also need therapy to work those muscles back out. Right, you know right. what I mean? It was like, yeah, we're going to try to fix the the things that are shooting too much or too little of something. But at the same time, your trauma is still there. Right. That's not going to go away. And so we need to work on that too, or else you're just going to keep... Right. It's a full body thing. Yeah, for sure. For so, sure. But that's, that's why we're never going to sit and tell you that it's a one-size-fits-all remedy for no. your mental health. And, it and can't it's, be. It's always a journey too. Like something I'm learning in therapy is one step forward, two steps back or two steps forward, one steps back. Like, or I'm going side to side. I'm doing the fucking hokey pokey. I don't even know anymore. Okay. <laughs> I told her cause she was like, after what? The second mm -hmm. day of therapy, you called me and you were like, yeah. So I had like four panic attacks all day long, like after my therapy thing and whatever. I was in a two day panic attack after yes. my second therapy session. And I was like, hey, don't give up. This is when people give up. I, I, I hate to tell you this, but it's going to go like this. You will have a moment where you come back up from it. And that's the moment that you have to work towards. Cause I know so many people, including myself, give up after that really hard one yeah and they're like actually this isn't working because i feel worse right and but you have to but then you also have the moment where you feel great and you feel great for a week and you want to stop because you're like i'm, I'm cured, cured. <laughs> but you're definitely not nope. because i had a week where i got back on and i started talking to my therapist I was like barbara <laughs> Had a breakthrough. Yeah, I think I'm healed. I think I'm great. You did a great job. You're fired. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you and good night. Um, and then I had mm -hmm. several, several, one actually one of the worst panic attacks I've ever had in my life. Oh, that's and terrible. she told me, she was like, You will relapse. Yeah. You will. Yeah. And it's okay. You are strong. Yep. You have the tools to deal with this. And so I think. Having that and knowing I'm able to start over yeah. almost every week. Yeah. You know how some people, um, whether you're religious or not, I know that some people will go to church weekly mm -hmm. as almost like a refresher. Yes. Like I'm cleansed of my sins. Yeah. I apologized. I I am choosing to try my best. And I know I'm not going to be perfect but I am tr going to make a commitment right now to acknowledge what I did and try and do better. That's what therapy has kind of done for me. Yeah. It's almost like, yeah, I didn't go panic free yeah. this week, but I get to try again. Mm -hmm. And I learned a little bit more this time. That's exactly what it is too. Every time I feel like you learn a little bit more mm -hmm. and it's those moments that are going to help you heal because I don't go to therapy anymore. I'm going to <laughs> stop. Everyone who said nothing because yeah. you're all in my head. <laughs> it's just me in my head that's like, yeah. come on, you got insurance again. You need to go. That's the other thing I want to say to you, by the way, real yeah. quick, because I don't want to be like, go to therapy, go to therapy, go to therapy. Because I know that we're in the healthcare world that we have yeah. right now. That's not realistic for everybody. It's a privilege. It is a huge privilege. So I don't want us to sound like, well, just go to therapy and you'll be fine. Or just get medication. Yes. All of this stuff takes money and um, accessibility. Resources, yeah. insurance. We know. Um, I do think that conversations like this with even a friend or somebody who knows you really well can be super helpful if you can't get the help that you need. But if you can, I highly, highly, highly recommend it. Yeah. But I did want to say that because I'm like, oh, I don't ever want it to come well, off. Well, like too, there are like things on TikTok or on YouTube where people. There are like therapists on there. Yeah. And they've helped me. I'm like, oh, my gosh. Yeah. So I don't know if. if do your best, yeah. I guess, is the best advice we can give at this point with whatever you have access to. Yeah. But so. I was going to say that those therapy sessions that I have, I still remember things that, in, you know. Um, like homework Their tools. assignments. Yeah, that's absolutely. She yeah. was like, I'm going to help you give give you the tools that you need. So when these things happen now, I've had some <laughs> bad times. Yeah. This last summer was bad. Yeah, real bad. Uh, real bad. But it was also COVID and I think the world was <laughs> bad and I had hormonal things going on right. that were like up and, you and were down. isolated, yeah. Oh my God, it was terrible. But um, I don't know. I just think... There were, it could have been a lot worse. Yeah. I think. Yeah. It could have been as bad as it was four or five years ago. Yeah. You know if you I mean? had, if you had, didn't have those tools. Exactly. So, yeah. Like we're saying, this is just another tool. 
And I have another method. So one of the things that he talks about in his book is becoming an emotion scientist. I don't know what that means. I haven't read the book, but... Go get the book. (laughs) Go get the book. Tell Um, us about it. (laughs) If you would. I don't like to read. That's why I watched a video that told me what the book said. (laughs) Um, but he talks about something called the ruler method and ruler is an acronym. I feel like I've heard about that. Is that what the, um, an acronym is where each letter stands for a word. Yeah. Yes. I taught English. <laughs> 10, 11 thing. and 12. Um, okay. So it stands for recognizing, understanding, labeling, expressing, and regulating. Ooh. So recognizing, understanding, and labeling are internal methods. Yeah. So when you're having a feeling, you recognize, hey, I'm having this feeling. I'm having a feeling. Yeah. By the way, if you're thinking like, oh, simple. No. Not at all. <laughs> it is. Sometimes it takes me a moment to realize like, hey, you are being anxious right now because like we talked in our anxiety one, it masks itself as, as anger. Or sometimes I'll just be pissed off for no, I don't yeah. understand why. And I don't even realize until someone's like, hey, are you upset right now? That I'm upset. I'm just well, like, Well, we no, talked I'm about how some emotions are secondary emotions. And so they are actually masking something else. Mm-hmm. Um, like when we talked about shame and guilt yesterday, Shane said to me like, hey, I don't think we're on the same page. It bothered me when this happened. And my initial reaction was to be like, oh, did it? Yep. Did it bother you? Let me tell you all the ways in which it shouldn't have bothered you because I'm always right in my mind. (laughs) And I realized the reason I had such a visceral reaction is because I was embarrassed. I was embarrassed that I who believes to herself to be this flawless being, which I feel like (laughs) made a a mistake. A little bit of us, we all do. When we get called out for making a mistake, that is another thing. I just talked to my boyfriend about this. I was like, I love you. You have to work on, because it's something I'm also struggling with, but I'm working on catching that moment and being like, okay, wait a minute. Let me back up. Was I in the wrong here? Yep. Because if you jump straight to the defense, which mm-hmm. a lot of people do, that's you're going to miss an important growth moment. It's a protect thing. Yeah. I'm protecting myself because I feel like you're going to hurt me or you're going to think I'm a bad person. And embarrassment sucks. Yes. It sucks. Yes. And it's anytime you get embarrassed, I feel like we get brought back to a time where we were embarrassed and it was like a bullying moment yep. or something that like was traumatic. Yeah. So even these small embarrassments, you feel like, no, I have to tell you that you're wrong. Right. Because I can't be wrong because I'm, that's embarrassing. Let me tell me. you what happened. <laughs> so I was tired <laughs> and I was feeling. My Noah's therapist says all of my, she's Noah's, but she's also mine. Gosh, I had low energy. Sorry, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, she talks all the time. She's like, when Noah, she told me like when he's having those big emotions and those big feelings, she's like, she told him, and I have to work with him, to ask yourself in your head, am I tired? When was the last time yes. I ate? Yes. Am I hungry? Yep. Is there another reason maybe why I might be feeling this big feeling? Yes. Yes. I love children's psychologists because they dumb it down enough for me to be we like. We are all just chi- children in big bodies. <laughs> Literally. That's all we are. I'm like, so when I get upset, I'm like, am I hungry? Am I tired? Yes. That's why I call my anxiety attacks sometimes, not my anxiety attacks so much, but like my, embar- like this embarrassment kind of rage that I'm going to explain, an adult tantrum. Yeah. Because that's what it is. It is. Because we call children having tantrums. Like we say tantrum as if if it's like a silly thing, but right. it's not. They're still having a really big emotion. They might be tired. They might be hungry. They might and be feeling out of control. And it might be a big feeling about something like, oh, I took that away from them. And that's a silly thing that they're mad because I didn't let them eat a fork or whatever. Yeah. And that seems silly, but their emotions, what they're feeling is very real. Yeah. And that might be them, their first experience with not having bodily autonomy. Yeah. Or feeling like they can't do anything, that mm-hmm. they don't have any control over any part of their life. Yeah. That, as an adult, yeah. thinking about that makes me want to spiral. And mm-hmm. knowing that that's just the reality for a child, of course that's going to elicit a really big emotion, mm-hmm. you know? So anyway. And we are taught, as adults, stifle, stifle, stifle your emotions. Shh, right. Just shh, put it down, 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 down. So that a lot of times we don't have those big tantrums at the correct moment. We wait until uh, something snaps 
smaller something and that's when we explode and that's when you can take things out on the wrong people right or right just have that that explosion happen at a not so and that's when have, people are like oh you're so emotional right now and it's well like, then you have more of a cleanup because yes. if you would have just been like oh i was really tired in that moment so for example yesterday shane wanted to show me a song i had been listening to records all day long because ollie is obsessed with playing records <laughs> right so i didn't want to listen but i was like sure show me your song and so he's playing these songs over the Bluetooth speaker and I am scrolling on my phone. He felt like I was not paying attention. Uh-huh. He was right. <laughs> I'll be honest. He you was can't right. pay attention to a toddler 24 seven. Well, no, 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 no. I, he was saying I wasn't paying attention. Oh, you're attention. talking to Shane. Yeah. Kay. I wasn't paying attention to the song he was showing oh, me. Oh, this is after the records. Yes. I got it. I'm here. And I was, I didn't notice that he turned it off. Oh, and so when he was like, I felt like you weren't listening, so I shut it off. Instead of it being like, oh my god, you're right, I wasn't listening. I'm so sorry. That that's my bad. I felt like, excuse you for assuming I wasn't listening when I wasn't listening. <laughs> yes. How fucking dare you? <laughs> yes, but I was tired. Yes. I was low energy, and then I wasn't pleasant, and so I was down here. I was fatigued. Yes. Okay. And then I got some adrenaline because he accused me. So now I'm angry and I'm yep. enraged. But then I realized, hey, silly, he's right. And so I was like, whoopsie. <laughs> I'm going to need you to come. I, I was in the middle then. I yeah. landed myself in the middle and I was like, hey, I understand that you thought that I wasn't paying attention. I know when I'm excited about something and I want to show someone and they're not even making eye contact mm-hmm. or reacting, it can make me feel like they don't care. And I'm sorry that oh, I made I you feel that. that way. Yeah. And that was hard. I need yeah. you to know that that was not easy for me to do, especially because I was already tired. But at the same time, and at that I of, needed to do that yeah. to own it and allow him to have that feeling because I need, I want that back from him. Yes. I want him to hear me when I'm having those feelings. Yes. So anyway. It's hard to humble yourself into being like, I was wrong. That was the hardest thing in the world for me to start doing. And again, therapy, she was like, you're not right all the time. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, how dare you? <laughs> Right. First of all, yeah. that's offensive. You don't know me. I am right a lot. <laughs> right. <laughs> but like, to be fair, <laughs> listen. But she's like, you're never gonna grow. You will not grow. You will stay stagnant if <clears throat> you are always on the defense. If you are always the one believing that you're correct in the situation, because there's just no way. Right. We're not always right, and um, you're gonna start losing respect from people. Well, they won't give it back to you if that's the way you treat them. Here's the thing: was I wrong because I was tired? And didn't feel like listening? No. Right. Was Shane wrong for feeling ignored? No. Right. We both can have legitimate experiences there and still be there for each other. You know what I mean? It's just you not invalidating his emotions at that time. Right. Right. So all of that to say, in that moment, I was recognizing, understanding, and labeling what I was feeling. Yeah. All before I said anything. Yeah. Because the end of it, so that's recognizing, understanding, label. The last two is expressing and regulating. And the expressing or the expression and regulation part of it is external. So that's what other people see. So I had those feelings and I had a choice. I can either express my feeling as rage and uh, defensiveness Uh or I can express it as understanding. And here's the thing. This is not easy to do. And it's also not fair because people can put a label on something that they shouldn't. Mm -hmm. It is not fair for someone else to label your emotions. And that here, I'm going to read a quote from the book. (laughs) Are you good? (laughs) You got stuck in the blanket. I know. So this is a quote. From the book, it says, um, so when it comes to regulation, how, when, how and when we express emotions can dictate a lot. Like we, it's controlled by other people because you find yourself not being able to be a certain way around around certain certain people. people. So the quote is the unwritten, but widely agreed upon guidelines for how, where, when, and in whose presence we may express our feelings. These regulations are far 
from simple often stem from stereotypes that are themselves damaging. Minorities report fears that emotional displays will fall um, into traps set by old stereotypes Mm -hmm. and trigger backlash. Mm -hmm. So in the video, uh, in Khadija's video, she talks about um, Serena Williams. I don't know. Do you remember... um, the whole ordeal with the ra- the tennis racket. Yes. How she slammed a racket on the ground because she was mad at the ref. Yes. If a man would have done that. Then that's just, he's upset. Right. But because she was a woman and because she was a black woman, she was aggressive. Yes. She was overreacting. Yes. She was dramatic. And all that did was invalidate a very real upsetting experience for her. Yeah. And reinforce negative stereotypes that have already been put on a specific group of people. Yep, exactly. And although you and I don't necessarily understand what it's like to be put into those tropes, to put into those stereotypes, we can understand from a female perspective. Oh, if I'm having an argument with a person and I start crying, immediately everything I've said is out the window. I have to announce when I start to cry. What it's about and why. Yes. (laughs) Because if not, it's like, Okay, I literally <laughs> crying. Okay, okay. <laughs> now she's crying, and I'm like, no, listen. <laughs> I will have to say, I'm going to cry when I say this because I'm an emotional person. Mm-hmm. But what I'm saying is very real. You and- need to hear me when I say this, and don't just look at my tears. Right, and <laughs> it's so frustrating because I know people will see a woman crying and already assign a label to what she's feeling or Mm -hmm. what she's about to say. They've already decided that whatever comes out of her mouth is just irrational. It's going to be too, it's, it's your time of the month. Yep. Oh, must be. You're so hormonal right Right. now. Mm -hmm. Ah, yeah. It's very unstable. You seem unstable. And then if you try to be professional and keep a calm demeanor, then it's, um, oh, she's too, what's that word called? Stoic. Yeah. Uh, Cold. Yes. She's cold. She's cold. She's cold. She's callous. She doesn't, Like it, there is no winning there, right? Because right. it's if you try to be completely professional and I'm not going to show any emotion, it's like, wow, she's a cold bitch, yeah. But if you do show emotion, it's like, wow, she's irrational, right? <laughs> there's there's no winning. And what's hard is it can actually be really dangerous sometimes for women because, um, it, I mean, we're not going to bars anymore <laughs> yeah. because we have significant others and COVID, but when we were in public places and people would try and hit on us depending on, so we either can have no emotion. Yeah. And then lead you're, someone on yeah. or. Yeah. Yeah. If you are nice to them. Yep. Then you're leading them on. Mm-hmm. Then it's why were you even talking to me? Why are you being right. nice to me? I bought you a drink. You were just yeah. after my money. Yeah. And it's like, I didn't ask you to fucking buy me a drink. Or if you're assertive and you're like, mm, mm, I'm, I'm okay. No, thank you. Then you're a bitch. Yep. Which I think is funny because that's when women resort to, oh, I have a boyfriend. And that is always the funniest thing that I hear because it's like men will respect if another man is involved. Yes. But won't respect you saying no. Which I was listening to the Approachable podcast and um, one of the hosts of it. I don't know. One of the girls for Sam, her husband was on it and Mm -hmm. they were talking about um, misogyny. And he was they were talking about how men will think that that situation, a guy being like, well, fuck you then. Um, and going off on a girl is an isolated incident. But the reason it's an isolated incident is because a guy is less likely to do it. If another guy is around. Yes. And that's because he knows it's wrong. Yes. And they don't want to prove that they're being an asshole in front of other guys. Cause you have to sort of impress it, but right. they can do it in front of a girl because the only reason he was being nice to you in the first place was to get in your pants. Right. Was to get something. Right. So the second you shut that down, I don't have to act like a nice guy in front of right. you. I don't have to get your respect. Right. Get you to like me. Now we do recognize that there are guys who can just be nice to be nice, but those aren't the guys who are going to flip the switch when you turn them down yeah. or when you set a boundary, they're going to respect that boundary. And we do acknowledge that those men exist and we love those men. And if, if you are those men, please start sticking up when other men are doing wrong yeah. things. Because I do know, I do know that there are those men. Obviously, we're with two men. We love them. However, now Corey's friends are awesome, so they're not that type. But like, I Shane know doesn't people. Have any friends. <laughs> no, <I'm kidding. laughs> but I know people that are like, I would never, and they are good people. Mm-hmm. But I've seen who they hang out with, and I'm like, well, your friends do. Yeah. So next time you see them, call them out on it. Right. I would if if I had a friend who was being totally toxic to just random people for no reason. I feel like I would say something. Right. And think, and the reason 
that even that situation relates back to emotional intelligence is why did that guy respond that way? And hold on. Wait, what I was going to say. Sorry. Yeah. I was just going to say the reason why I don't want you to think, well, why can't you just say it to the guys? But the reason why is because they will take you more seriously if you tell them to stop. Yeah. Because if a woman does, they will not take us seriously. Yeah. They'll be like, oh, you're just being a bitch. Like yeah. I guarantee if guys that are like that are watching this right now, they're like, and just like they it just is, hate men. well, we've talked before how it is not black people's or people of color's responsibility to educate other people about why they should give a shit and yep. why they should change certain things and become um, anti-racist yes. and advocate. Not like, just not it racist. Is, yeah, it is not their job to educate. It's nope. not women's job. Nope. To tell other men or hey. to tell men in general to stop being pieces of shit. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so, um, but. What I was saying was, so, yeah. no, you're fine, that I point out how guys act in those situations because they're embarrassed. Mm -hmm. They're feeling rejected. Yes. They're feeling angry. They're feeling hurt. They're feeling shame. And instead of owning those feelings, instead of late recognizing, understanding, and labeling them. That that's not the woman's feelings that it, the reason why you're feeling those feelings. She didn't do anything wrong. She's allowed to say no to you. She triggered an insecurity that you have. It is your, you are responsible for your feelings. Right. And instead of owning those and being like, you know what, I'm just going to tuck my tail between my mm -hmm. legs and just go on and try again. Right. It has to be your fault because then I'm not embarrassed anymore. Right. And so I know it sounds aggressive when we say it in that way, but we are raising young men. Yeah. <laughs> I have two boys. You have a son. There's a reason why we're passionate about this. <laughs> right. Because the experience that we had growing up, I don't ever want my son to be a contributing factor. Well, that's part of the problem, too, is in the same way that women are not allowed to have a full range of emotion. Yeah. Men are also not allowed to have a full range of emotion. A hundred percent. So, but in a different way. Yeah. Men, I feel fall into two categories. You're either passionate or you're a pussy. Yeah. So you're allowed to have these big, just aggressive reactions. Mm -hmm. It's just your passion. Yeah. You're allowed to break a racket because you love the sport. You love the game. Yep. You're just into it. But if a woman does it, yeah. She's unstable. She's unhinged. She's ir irrational, emotional, right. right? aggressive, or not aggressive. But, but if you cry and you're a guy. You're a pussy. Then you're a pussy. How about this? I had a weird fucking thought the other day. Which is not true, by the way. I tell 100%. my son every day it is so okay to cry because the reason why so mm -hmm. many people, especially men, I'm sorry, but you get those bottles. If you're not letting it out. This is that's what they said. If you keep those bottled in there and you are not letting them out, that's going to come out. The wrong way. It's going right. to come out as anger. It's going to come out as lashing out on somebody. It's going to come out when you're drinking. It's going to come out, you know, those things. Think of a teapot. Yes. When a teapot gets too hot, what happens? Steam. Steam comes out, starts whistling. What's the only way to stop that? Pour out the water. Take oh. it off. <laughs> I was like, throw a towel over it. <laughs> no. You take it off the heat and you pour the water out. You Yes. The take steam, it off the heat. The steam is... the. It has to, the pressure within there has to be released one way. Yeah. And if it, if you're not in control of it, it'll come out whether you want it to or not. It's true. So, what a great analogy. <laughs> I'm so glad you thought it. But yeah, I think what I was just saying is I don't like the fact that negative stereotypes, negative mm -hmm. tropes, negative, um, oh, I remember what I was going to say. Please. I remember that I had a, a, a weird thought the other day. So, do you know what I noticed? Yeah, what? Is that with the rise of feminism mm -hmm. or smashing the patriarchy or just um, breaking down misogyny, like toxic masculinity. Gender norms, all that stuff. Right. We've also seen a decrease in rom-coms. Oh. Isn't that weird to think about? Watch some older rom-coms. And you'll That's see what I'm why. saying. <laughs> because the gender roles and all the things, there's a lot of yucky. If there is a rom com, it no longer centers around the guy. Yeah. It centers around the woman and it's more uh, a journey of empowerment rather than. As it should. Right. Rather than trying to win some prize of a woman. Which is what a lot of them are. It's like, this right. is my prize. I need to. 
Right. Have and this. it's and it's not like following a guy and his friends who are spending so much time trying to trick a woman into like being talking about there's one I can't even remember the name of, but there were so many weight like jokes and shit in it. <gasps> Shallow how? No. But oh. that one is bad. <laughs> yeah. But it's got a good meaning behind it, I think. Mm. No? I haven't seen it since the Me 90s. neither. <laughs> but there was another one where it had Hugh Grant maybe in it. But the mm. whole time they were talking, I was just like, ew, ew, stop talking yeah. about women like that. Yeah. Watching it again, just, oh, my God. And then. I think people... challenging this stuff has really been the downfall of the modern rom-com. Good. Fuck rom-com. <laughs> I'll say it to their face. <laughs> Do you have any more on your paper? No, that was all my paper. Okay. Well, I was just going to say that. <laughs> just. Hold this up for the entire. Oh, no, 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 I did have more. Oh, please. What a surprise ending. <laughs> oh, wow. Did we talk about regulating? Yes. Regulator. We did? I don't know. I think so. Wasn't that the R in ruler? There's two R's in rulers. Oh. No, okay, that was then. recognizing. Recognizing. So expressing and regulating is just talking about Got it. the external part of it and making sure. When you express and regulate, that's when you can tell if you did a good job with the internal part. Oh. So if you didn't do a good job recognizing what your emotion is, when you express it, not going to come out well. <laughs> wow. That's really good. Right? I like so that. if you didn't recognize, oh, I was embarrassed in that moment. Instead, you labeled it as anger. You're going to feel justified in being angry yes. with your expression. Or, yeah, wow. Where if you acknowledge, oh, I felt embarrassed, you're more likely to have a humble response mm -hmm. to that in because, your expression. Because, again, it's not that person's fault that you felt embarrassed, unless they're actively doing something to embarrass yeah, you. Yeah, intentionally. And I think that's another thing that gets muddled up in a lot of people's mm -hmm. minds is, well, you did that to me on purpose to make me look stupid. And it's right. like, I'm just living, man. I'm just yeah. out here trying to fucking That sounds live. like a you problem. Yeah, that sounds like you have a complex about looking stupid. Right. And maybe you should talk to somebody <laughs> yeah. about that. Yeah. Um, I forgot that we didn't hit that part. Um, but then there's... One last part that's called, um, there's this program that they're starting to implement into schools um, called Ooh. CELL. It's social emotional learning. Okay. And it helps lead to allyship and activism because it creates common ground with emotion, even if you haven't been able or can't walk in someone else's shoes. So I'm never going to know what it's like to be a person of color. I'm, sure. I'm never going to know what it's like to be a man. Yeah. I'm not going to know what it's like to be an indigenous person. So like, but there are some common grounds that all people feel embarrassment, shame, guilt, um, alienated. And so focusing on those feelings yeah. humanizes people. Makes you have empathy. Right. For sure. If you can look at someone else and be like, oh, they have been bullied before. I know what feeling bullied looks like. That yeah. I that doesn't feel good. I, I don't like that they felt that. Instead of saying, oh, well, they shouldn't have done what they did because they're a certain. I know that they're yeah, a certain kind of person or well, they came from a certain. That's never happened to me. Yeah. So couldn't be their, like, it has to be their problem. Right. Seeing them for who they are as a person and not their circumstance. Yeah. So I thought that that was really cool. And even if it's not being taught, in certain schools like being able to bring that into homes yeah. i think is a great thing too that's something i wanted to mention i can't tell you how many messages we've gotten either from teenagers um first of all you if, are a demographic <laughs> yeah if you ever come into our dms and say i don't know if i'm your demographic you are literally every human being is our demographic yeah. we want everyone to feel like they can see themselves sitting on this couch with us yeah. you're all welcome here um second we got messages from people who are like, my mom listens to you and so do I. Oh, I love and, that. Yeah, Generational. And, <laughs> yeah. And knowing that like this could be an opportunity <gasps> for discussion between Talking family members. Moment. Like I think that that's great Yeah, because really this is. is not easy stuff to talk about. No. And I know. Um, and that is a generational thing too, because I know the generations above us and even more so their parents were taught. We don't talk about feelings. Don't yeah. discuss them with us. Um, your feelings are your problem. Keep them way, way, way down. <laughs> and maybe your parents aren't yeah. like that, and that's freaking great. I'm just yeah. saying as a whole, 
generationally. That's yeah. how it was for a very long time. And people learn how to parent from their parents. That's until we got to the world of parenting books and now YouTubers and things like that. Um, people going to psychologists a lot more. You were taught to parent how you were parented. So it's a cycle of if we don't talk about it, then I'm not going to talk about it with you. And it's important because it can lead to a lot of healing and a Mm -hmm. lot of understanding. Yeah. And um, I call it filling the space. I don't know if I've talked about that on here. So like if Sierra and I, if there's a misunderstanding and we don't speak, there's plenty of time for her to fill that space. She fills the space with the reason she believes we're not speaking and she can fill it with Jerry's mad at me. Jerry thinks I'm stupid. Jerry, um, whatever. And I now also can fill that space. And now instead of just being able to discuss whatever the problem was, the actual problem between we us, we have to unpack all the other shit we put into the space because we thought of problems for what it was. And that might not even be like, I know but whenever- now that we just planted seeds of insecurity in the space. <laughs> yes. Yes. We got to weed our garden. Please. <laughs> Let's weed our garden. Yeah. It's getting filthy. <laughs> Honestly. But I know whenever me and Corey fight, that's what happens. If we go, because I am a very, he is a person, we argue in two separate ways. I'm a person who I have to have some space because I have a hard time with this, what we're talking about. And I'm quick to anger and I'm quick to saying the meanest thing I can when well, I yeah, am Well, yeah, because angry. I think sometimes people can jump to the expressing Before they've recognized, understood, or labeled it. And in my mind, you just hurt me. And so instead of being like, hey, you hurt me. Um, Let's talk about that. It's I want to hurt you back. And I want it to hurt worse. I'm going to be better at it. Yeah. (laughs) And that's what I do. It's a terrible way to be, honestly. It doesn't help. So now how I think that I should fix that is I'm like, I'm just going to remove myself. We'll be in two separate spaces because I'm going to say mean things. Let me just go be away from you for six hours or whatever. (laughs) And he can't. He's like, we have to talk. Even if we're going to scream at each other, I want to talk. And I'm like, yeah, no, that really... (laughs) I'm going to say some mean things. Yeah. You don't want to do this with me. For your own safety, I'm going to need you to not speak to me. So I do. I leave. But in that time, I'm like, oh, that motherfucker. Yeah. (laughs) Like in my head saying this, 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 this. And or what you want him to do, and when he doesn't do those things because he doesn't know that you want them done, you're more then angry. I'm g- then I'm going to be even more pissed. Now when I come home and he's like, hey, what's up? I'm like, what? <laughs> what do you mean, what's up? And then you like pull out the filing cabinet full of <laughs> shit that you had put in there. I'm like, that's weird because in my mind, <laughs> this is what just happened. And But in his mind, that had not just been happening. Right. It was fully me. and he had had time to actually calm down and think about it and then we could have a conversation but i got more fueled up i actually yeah. got more angry by that alone time and i'm like now i'm ready for world <laughs> war on in three <laughs> oh it's tough yeah we're all still growing we're all still learning i think that's like the biggest thing i don't care how old you are i don't care how long you've been living i don't care how long you've been communicating with people i don't care how much experience you think you have we all have room to grow yeah always Mm -hmm. so humbling ourselves and being able to catch it when it's our bad or when it's we're interpreting something differently that happens to me all the time i'm like oh you said what to me well this is what i think you mean and then if i would just ask they'd be like no this is what i meant by that that's what i've had to do with shane so Something that I do is I, if Shane says something and I take it negatively, I think to myself, okay, did he really mean that? Because he loves you. He loves you more than anything in the world. He wouldn't be here if he didn't. He would not. If you're hurting by something he said or did. I think that that's not how he, he intended. He He would never want to hurt you. He didn't want to ask him he's not me (laughs) give him an opportunity to correct it allow him to know that you're feeling hurt because it's okay to be hurt yes and so not okay to hurt other people right and so i'll normally go to him like hey when this happened this is how i felt yeah is that how you meant me to feel yeah and this is what i took from it is that what you meant right and normally he's like, oh, my God, absolutely not. A and lot of times that's exactly what the answer will be. Right. And normally the only reason that I got triggered by it in the first place is because I have an insecurity. Yeah. And it is not 
his fault that I have these insecurities. It's not his fault that I have these triggers. He might not even know about it. Sometimes I don't even know about exactly. it. Exactly. I'm like, bitch, why'd you get here? <laughs> I truly didn't know that that was going to trigger me, but now I'm fucking pissed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's, did you, did we cover everything that basically you Yeah. <laughs> when I was just going to look and then we hit it. So <laughs> we're, we're pretty good. Oh, good. Yeah. But yeah, I, I think it's just really important that we get back to things that we like to talk about. And something, I know a lot of you guys are here from TikTok. So stoked that you found us through TikTok. Honestly, the best. But what, I like to think that you came here because you thought something was funny on TikTok, but you stayed because you felt seen here. Yeah, and that you, your experiences are valid here. Yeah, and that we are all people who struggle with being people. <laughs> and It's fucking hard. If we can have these talks that even like one part of it is like, oh, damn, that, that clicked. Yeah, that I didn't think of it that way. Right. There were things you told me today that yeah. I was like, oh, I haven't even thought about that. Well, all of that, when I, when this I saw that. This is homework for me. <laughs> that freaking chart. It. I'm a very visual person. Yeah. And so when I saw that chart and was able to see that my emotions can be scientifically charted, like yeah. mapped, and that by being able to recognize where they are, I can control how long they stay there. Sometimes my feelings, I don't feel like I'm in control of them. Yeah. They feel like they're in control of me. Yeah. And I, it's, Sometimes gets really, really dark yeah. where I'm like, I feel like I'm never going to get out of this. Yep. That's the worst part is when you feel like they have a hold on you and there's no way out of it. Right. You feel trapped in a body and you're like, well, this one sucks. Yeah. Give me a new one. <laughs> yeah. Mine's broken. I, I don't want to. Yeah. I don't. That's how I feel every time I'm in a little depression pit. Mm-hmm. It's very. Um, I just feel out of control. That's the the only way that I can say it is mm-hmm. that I feel completely out of control. And so knowing that there might be ways that yeah. I can help myself out of it, because there are times now where they I know they're coming. I can feel it. I see myself getting into the patterns of, you know, going back into the yeah. sad bitch island. <laughs> and, Sailing away to sad bitch island. Yeah. But if I can see it coming, um, kind of like accept those emotions and do like a a Grey's Anatomy binge day yeah. or like lay on the couch and just like chill not lay in bed and absolutely berate myself yeah. and be like you stupid idiot what is wrong with your brain for being broken why can't you just be happy right yeah. now instead I'm just, just like, be happy <sighs> you've been it before and then I'm just like hey why don't I turn on Grey's Anatomy so I have a reason to be sad yeah <laughs> it works <laughs> sometimes it does I know and I'm like, oh, I know why. And and sometimes I need that dam to break. Mm-hmm. So I need to start crying. I need to feel. I mm-hmm. need emotions. So you know, it works sometimes. Yeah. I'm still trying to figure it out when I figure it out. I'll let you guys know. <laughs> we'll keep you posted yeah. on our journeys. Yep. But um, let us know. Like, you guys have been so great at interacting with us. Yeah. Please, Please keep doing stop. that. <laughs> yeah. Honestly. Because some of the most powerful messages that we've gotten are from people saying like, I feel normal now. Mm -hmm. I feel understood. Thank you guys for talking about things that I have felt, but couldn't put into words and all of those. That's great. We love doing that. We want to continue to do that. I want to encourage you guys to do that for each other. Yeah. You've been already so active in the comments and stuff. I'd love the whole point was to try and create a community. And I feel like, we're all here for each other. Yeah. We're all, I feel like we're all at the same party, but we're all standing facing the wall because we're all socially awkward and don't actually want to physically speak to anyone. We're like, I love that we're here right now, but like, don't talk to me. <laughs> I, I see you. Don't fucking come close to me. Yes. <laughs> yes. But you can. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I think that's all that's, we got for yeah. emotional intelligence. It's mostly just like, Taking a minute, being and aware, checking in with yourself. Mm-hmm. Always be checking in with yourself and asking where where are these things coming from. And What's if the you're source? Feeling a feeling. There's probably a reason why. There, there's most certainly is a reason why. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so find it. Yeah. Just, and just, <laughs> <laughs> just 
Yeah. <laughs> threaten it if you need to. Uh, or we will. Let yeah. us know. We'll threaten you. We'll threaten you. <laughs> Let us know, and we will threaten your uh, mental illnesses. <laughs> it's the least we can do. Stop being fucking mean to my friend. <laughs> Honestly, I have, I have a friend who does that. It's, yeah, that's how I feel. <laughs> um, okay, that's, so that's all. I have. Yeah. Uh, thanks for hanging out with us. Yeah. Um, and if you want our PO box, let us know. <laughs> we have one. And we've got our our dildo mugs, <laughs> friggin' loving it. So, yes. um, uh, we're out. Goodbye, psych you suckers. <laughs> you thought you were done? Um, hey, here's the deal. Um, we both had a like full on panic attack, and uh, had a very hard time <laughs> trying to because I think this is the first like serious. Yeah episode that we've recorded since having so many people yeah 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 because the first time we recorded it was kind of like no one's here yeah <laughs> no one knows it still kind of felt like um we were in a shadow a little bit mm -hmm. and now that that's not the case it's almost like we really don't want to let you guys down we really don't want to disappoint we want to um i don't know be what you came here for yeah <laughs> whatever that is so i think uh we both were kind of feeling a lot of pressure at the beginning of this and um so if it, if it was a little weird super sorry <laughs> that's why um but one of the most important things that we wanted, wanted to, to touch on acknowledge yeah and through anxiety forgot is what's going on right now in the south specifically texas louisiana um we are thinking of you guys, yeah. and if anyone out there, like, I don't know if there are, like, Red Cross fundraisers, whatever is going um, on right now. I don't know if anybody follows AOC on Twitter, but she's been posting a lot of charities. Yeah. So, they raised over $2 million already, but Amazing. please, if you can, donate. Yeah. I intend to, so. Yeah. Um, those of you who are from Texas and Louisiana and um, all the other states right now who have reached out to us, we are thinking about you guys. We yeah. cannot imagine i was just uh talking to a friend from louisiana and she was saying that like um this was the first first of all it was record lows there and yeah. they had to write, wrap their pipes they were going to be without water for three days and i know some of you from texas were sharing with us too that you had no water no electricity and and we have seen the videos of like the houses collapsing and yeah um it's horrible the fact that not only do some of the southern states have to deal with hurricanes yeah but and now, tornadoes um but now also this horrific snowstorm yeah. um and and they're just not prepared for it, it there, yeah there was no i mean there was a warning but not in near enough time to rebuild houses yeah or to <laughs> get structurally like, sound um salt trucks and things that people yeah. need right, so yeah right. it's very it is horrible yeah so we just wanted to let you know that we're thinking of you and um our hearts go out to you and Absolutely. I hate thoughts and prayers because it's like do more <laughs> yeah, yeah but we, we just, intend to and yeah, yeah we just want to let you know that we are we are thinking about you guys Absolutely. Um, so now with that free Brittany 2020 <laughs> for real I did want to mention her well Louisiana it kind of ties in yeah, yeah. I, I did want to mention Britney Spears that was another one on my list and I totally forgot um, because this goes along with the whole mental health, mental um, health, having a breakdown and then being labeled as being crazy. Yes. Not in control of yourself and your yes. finances. Mm. Amanda Bynes, I think, is going as yeah. was treated very similarly. She has a lot of childhood trauma that she's been coming out with recently. And yeah. it's terrible what happened to them yeah. when they were younger. And I think if people would have paid more attention and not just labeled her as a specific person or um, assumed things about her based on her profession and, and who she was as a performer, um, then she maybe could have gotten the help that she needed or she could have been protected from things that uh, she wasn't protected from. And that was just another example of going back to what we were saying. Yeah. Um, I can't tell you how many times we listen to these episodes and we're like, oh my God. Damn it. <laughs> and another thing. And yeah. so it kind of feels weird that we're back on here saying, and another 
other thing. But it happened be- right when we shut it off. We were like, wait. Yeah, and we felt so weird that we were so weird yeah. the whole time, and it felt like. We were anxious, you guys. Yeah. But so We talked about it, and we decided we knew what our feelings were. <laughs> and we decided to come back just for another five minutes. Where I dissociated almost the whole time again. <laughs> Yeah, essentially, if you ever um, left someone's house and then like forgot your coat inside, and so you walked back in and then ended up staying for another twenty five minutes, when you're like, I was already the car is still on. Yeah, that's basically what's happening right now. So um, we're gonna go get in the car now. Yeah. So thank you for hanging out again. Yeah, we are thinking of all of you. Our hearts go out to you. We love you. Um, we will see you next week. All right. Goodbye. <laughs>